So hi again, folks. Uh, this is your Serial Cynic. Back with another video again. And um, <laughs> I am back with my age-old topic because every time I do a video, um, generally around the Hebrew-Israelite situation, I always seem to forget something or other thoughts pop into my head. And as they do, I just prefer to go ahead and bring them to light. For discussion's sake, of course. All right? Again, for discussion. I do realize that whether one holds a belief or not, you know, unless they're harming someone, um, it's really them, you know? So this is for a matter of discussion and debate. All right? So here goes. Um, one of the things I've noticed in reading uh, material about them, or even from them who respond to me in my uh, videos, I happen to notice that I, I can't speak for all Hebrew Israelites, obviously, you know, or all people consider themselves to be um, black Jews or whatever they want to call themselves. But um, one of the things I happen to notice is that they talk about the fact that we, black folks, Negroes as they call us, on this side of the world, are Hebrew Israelites or the people of the Bible because we are a cursed people. Now, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know if I want to walk around a place saying that I am part of a cursed people or there's some sort of a curse placed upon me by some deity out there somewhere because some ancient book says so or that's what we believe it says but they seem to walk around with it as a badge of honor hey i'm cursed we're cursed that means i'm really the child of god i'm really a child of the god of the bible and again i don't exactly know how to feel about something like that that just seems like a weird uh, thing to be in love with or to be obsessed with so i don't want to be a person ascribing to such a notion no matter what some book says now i know that they will point to it and say hey look at us as black people look at what we're going through the book of deuteronomy predicted these things look at all the things the curses that it mentions most certainly it's got to be talking about black people right well, I know a black person can pick up the Bible and look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. And there are things in there they can relate to when you talk about us as a collective group. But how does it explain black folks who have never endured any of that stuff, who have been successful, who may have been born with a gold spoon in their mouth, perhaps they have a wealthy family, don't know a day of hard work in their life don't know a day of any problems in their life basically live and die with no major illnesses or any of these so-called curses that are mentioned there how do you explain them and some of these people are not even paying attention to any deity in the sky or believing in God how do you explain their success their basic more or less cruise through life without any major issues in their lives how do you explain them did the curse miss them or are we going to say well you know what though they um that family of, of black people over there they were not hebrew israelites they were a different type of black person who are not part of this curse thing going on so that's something that i don't quite get or understand and it comes down to this other thing again about this hit and miss thing that goes on in the world and how some people perceive God where it's like hey you know I pray to God and I do all the right things and that's why I'm blessed that's why I have money that's why I don't have illnesses and everything because <laughs> I'm God's little special favorite but you over there you're suffering from this and you're suffering from that or you're not financially where you're supposed to be because you're not trusting in God like I do well, in this case, it's somewhat the reverse. 
I guess I can look around and say, well, hey, I guess I'm not a part of the Hebrew Israelite group because I have money. I'm not talking about myself, mind you. I'm just talking about someone who can say this. I have money. You know, um, I don't suffer from any of these so-called curses that's listed in here. Um, I'm living life. You know, I've lived a good life. Um, I don't even believe in God. And I don't believe what you believe. And yet, I don't see any curses falling upon me. Other than the fact that if you want to say my black skin is a curse, I have black skin, but it has not stopped me from making progress or from arriving at certain places in my life. So how do you explain those people? They're not a part of the curse. And I'm talking about black people on this side of the world. Now, true, that is not the majority of us. Okay? But for the... So say for one of every... 10,000 black folks you come across on this side of the world that are successful, doing well, healthy. How come the curse missed them or the curses missed them? Now, I've said in a previous video about Deuteronomy chapter 28. It is my opinion, and I really hold to this opinion strongly. And I'm not just making it up or pulling it out of my behind. Just from the observations and just from what I've read from of you know various scholars here and there various people in academics and i'm not even talking about people who are biblical scholars but just people common sense i guess looking at it from an from an academic standpoint and just looking back at history and see how things unfold deuteronomy chapter 28 the hebrew israelite will tell you it predicts the plight of black folks well, and when they say black folks, they mean a specific type of black folks who they call Hebrew Israelites. But the way I look at it, the book of Deuteronomy and, as a matter of fact, the entire, well, the entire Old Testament, pretty much most of it, was written or sat, you know, the, the, the people who wrote it sat down and compiled it sometime after 586 BCE when the Babylonians exiled the Jews from Israel, from the land of Judah, I should say, or the kingdom of Judah, exiled them to Babylon. At that point, the Jews decided they needed to sit down and put their history together. Some of this history came down to them, I guess you can say, on an oral level, passed down stories and so forth. And with these passed down stories, the people who wrote it filtered these stories through their religious beliefs and their theological understanding of the world of their day. In doing so, the target or the mission or what they were trying to accomplish with what they were compiling is to explain to the Jews who were in exile at the time why they were in exile. So this is after the fact. So now they are going back and telling their history to show where they made the wrong turn that led them into the exile in Babylon. When you understand that this is the backdrop or this is what they were using as the purpose for putting their history together, then you understand why the Old Testament was written the way that it was written. In short, it was written. Let me not go back to the very beginning, but let's go back to the time with Israel on the scene. It basically was written in the way like this. Israel made a covenant with their God. When they made that covenant with their God, they swore to hold to that covenant. Somewhere along the line and not long after, they started detouring or moving away from this covenant in doing so their national deity known as Yahweh became angry at them but because he was supposedly merciful he kept having mercy on them and eventually sent his prophets to them to warn them about the things that they were doing wrong that they should turn away from their wicked ways and from following other gods and turn themselves back over to him according to the covenant Israel, kingdom of Judah, they kept going in, 
the covenant, out of the covenant, in, out, in, out, until their national deity ran out of patience with them and eventually allowed their enemies, in this case the Babylonians, or you can say the Assyrians, to overtake them, to scatter them, to exile them as a form of punishment for all of their wrongdoings and not following the laws that were included in the covenant. So by the time we get to the Babylonian exile, the writers could turn around and say, here's your history, here's where you went wrong, and this is why you need to continue serving or turn back to Yahweh and do what he asks of you. And if you do this, you will be blessed. Because see back here, when we go back as far as Moses, notice here, he said, if you did this, 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 and this, I would bless you. And if you did this, this, and that, I will curse you. Well, you did this, this, and that, so he cursed you, and that's why you're in the position that you're in right now. That is basically the basis of much of the Old Testament. That is pretty much it in a nutshell. But, in today's world, a Hebrew Israelite will tell you that those curses were somewhat perpetual. It didn't end at a certain point in time. It continues on to this very day. Because, hey, look at us black people. We're scattered all over the world. Look at what we've gone through. It must be talking about us. Today. 500 years ago. 1,000 years ago. Look at all that we have gone through. It must be talking about us. This is the rationale that they use to say that Deuteronomy chapter 28 is talking about us. Now, as you know, from listening to my other videos, I take the Bible with a grain of salt and figure that those things were written not to predict the future per se, but to try to show or fixed in a way to try to show that their lawgiver Moses through the quote-unquote anointing from God, wrote down these predictions as to what was going to happen to the people if they did not follow Yahweh. And when they ended up in the Babylonian exile and all the various things that happened to them along the way and all the different brutalities from other nations, neighboring nations that they went through, these are supposed to be a direct result to prove to them, see, when you don't follow the law, look at the bad things that happened to you. And the Babylonian exile was like the icing on the cake. But to the Hebrew Israelite today, it's gone beyond that. It's more than that. It's the Roman invasion. It's slavery. It's what's going on with us today. Of course, as you know, I don't really see it that way because I don't take the Bible like that to say, hey, some deity, somebody, somewhere had this anointing and this foresight and this vision 2,000, 4,000 years into the future to see what black people will be going through. I don't see it like that. Personally, I find this a little bit of a cop-out because I can sit back and say, oh, woe is me, woe is us, oh, we're cursed. And why in the world would I want anything to do with some deity who is that petty? And it puts us in a position where it basically says... And it puts us in that position where a lot of people find themselves in, where you can have charlatans, you can have scam artists who can then put you in a position to say, hey, you know what? You better follow my way. You better follow this. You better follow what I'm teaching because if you don't, this is why you're in the position that you're in. We as a people need to get back. Get back to this. Get back to that. We've got to eat this kind of food, wear this kind of clothes, wear our hair a certain type of way because the law says... See here in Leviticus, it says we should do this and we should do that. And all those crazy, ridiculous, outrageous, antiquated laws that the Bible has written in there for an ancient people. Now you'll have somebody come in and try and tell you that you need to follow all of that stuff if you want to be in the good favor of the biblical God. Now, do these people really think that all the black folks on this side of the world are somehow going to wake up one day and say, hmm, yeah, you know what? I think I need to go back and follow the Bible and follow all these rituals and laws of the Old Testament. That's going to get us right. No, I can tell you this much. Collectively, black folks are not ever going to do that. 
So I guess we will stay cursed. Do you think all of us are going to wake up? So no matter how many Hebrew Israelites you have out on the street corner making a bunch of noise, for every one person that stops to listen to them, thousands are going to go past them looking at them like they're crazy. It will never happen that we collectively, if that's their mission, that we collectively all come together, all wake up and smell the coffee that they're offering and say, hey, yeah, we're going to turn ourselves to the God of the Bible, to Yah or Yahweh or whatever they want to call him. So he can start blessing us and give us back our land and all this good stuff. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is about an ancient people written long after the fact and written back in time to explain why the Jews were in Babylon insulted, had their city of Jerusalem besieged, had their people dragged off. Or you're talking about like back in the days of Sennacherib, Hezekiah, or Ahaz, when the Assyrians came down, besieged their city of Jerusalem. People were resorting to cannibalism, which of course Deuteronomy chapter 28 talks about. So of course the writers knew all of this stuff already. They had this in their mind. It was history to them already. And what they simply did was simply just write it in, place it back in time to the time of Moses to say that these were things that were predicted that were going to happen so that when they did happen, it could look as though See, Moses said it was going to happen to us. Now look at what happened to us right now. And see, that proves what we're trying to tell you is true. Follow what we're trying to tell you. Understand also that just before the Babylonian exile, you had King Josiah who went about and did an extreme reform in his kingdom and beyond. Because the reforms that took place before, like those of Hezekiah, more or less just took care of, more or less, Jerusalem and just the surroundings. But a lot of people in the land of Judah, on the outskirts, on the fringes, on the frontier, were serving other gods, doing their own thing. The royal family, on the other hand, they paid lip service to Yahweh, the Yahweh cult. That was their favorite cult. And you had a lot of holy men who basically follow the same cult. And the mission was to try to get all the people to unify under the cult of Yahweh. Josiah went the furthest in doing this, going around and basically purging any vestiges of the cult of Baal and anything to do with Ashtoreth, his cohort. But despite him doing all of that, people on the fringes were still doing their own thing. But his reform was pretty strong. And not long after, the people went into Babylonian exile. So while they were in Babylonian exile, depressed, destitute, down, shocked, saddened. And saddened. These are the type of things that came to their mind. And they had their holy men or their con man, or whoever it was, ready with a ready answer. You're in the mess because you did not follow the ways of Yahweh. Follow the ways of Yahweh and you will get out of this mess. Hence, the Old Testament, written in the way that it was written. Anyway, these are things for you to think about. I'll probably think of some more things, but I've got to get back here to some other things. I just want to just throw this video up. You can go ahead and comment down below. You can come with your thoughts, your objections, your agreements, whatever you want to say, feel free. I'll talk to you the next time, okay? You guys take care.